Just worship him, just worship him, just worship him. You are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome. Share the video, share the video, hallelujah. share the video hallelujah invite somebody we are talking about open heavens hallelujah what you and i need in this life to be victorious and to be pros to be prosperous and successful is an open heaven hallelujah thank you jesus invite somebody invite somebody hallelujah invite somebody invite somebody thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Be my comforter. Be my comforter. Hallelujah. Let's tell him thank you for bringing us thus far. 
It is the beginning of a brand new day, a brand new week. We are grateful to be in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says in His presence there is fullness of joy. In His presence there is liberty, there is freedom. So as you are come this morning, I want you to open your hearts of hearts. And that wherever you are going through, God will meet you where you are. Just open your mouth and begin to bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we bless your name this morning. We worship you. We declare you are King. We declare you are Lord this morning. We declare you are magnificent, O oh God. We worship you this morning, O oh God. Yeko Rabba Santaya. Just lift your hands to God. Open your mouth. Open your hearts. Hallelujah. Shakapo Santa Kopo Rikantaya. Lord, we honor your mighty name this morning. We declare you are mighty. We declare you are awesome. We declare there is no God like you in all of the earth. We join the host of heaven this morning, declaring your lordship this morning, O oh God. We decree and declare this morning, you are Lord of our lives. You are Lord over the nations. You are Lord over America. You are Lord over our homes. You are Lord over our marriages, O God. Thank you, Jesus. I want us now to commit our hearts of hearts to God this morning. The Bible says the word of God comes to strengthen us. The word of God comes to correct us in righteousness. The word of God comes to get our hope for each day. So as we are come this morning, you don't want nothing to hinder the presence of God. You want to receive everything that God has for you. So this morning, let's commit our hearts to God and ask Him for mercy to forgive us of anything that will be a hindrance this morning. Maybe it's a worry. Maybe that's something you are thinking about the whole night. Worry can heal your breakthrough. This one, I want you to commend those things to God this morning. Wherever it is that you know will be your stumbling block before you and God this morning. I want you to commend it to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you this morning. We commend our hearts to you this morning, oh God. Father, your people have come this morning. Tell God those things that you know is a hindrance or will be a hindrance. Lord, we plead for mercy this morning. Everywhere God, we have sinned against you, O oh God. We bring our trouble this morning before your throne of grace. We bring our weaknesses this morning before your throne of grace. We bring, O oh God, our mistakes this morning. And we plead for mercy, merciful Father. We come this morning, we empty ourselves. We say, Lord, we are sorry of anything, O oh God. Lord, let our hearts this morning be connected to you, O oh God. We disconnect ourselves this morning from every distractions of the enemy. Everything we are going through, God, that tries to be a distraction, we come against it this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We now take authority this morning over the atmosphere. We come against the plans of darkness today. We bind the hands of the enemy. We bring an end tonight to wickedness. We implore in just right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Ghost. We soak your lives this morning with the blood of Jesus. We decree and declare. Your lives will never be the same. Hallelujah. God bless you all this morning before I bring the men of God on this morning. I want you, wherever you are, you can either type or shout. Matter of fact, type and shout, God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. Somebody say, God is good. God is good. All of the time. Oh, I don't hear you. I don't see you typing those on Facebook and on YouTube. We are having church this morning. Say, so God is good. And all of the time, hey, 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 God is good. No matter what 
everyone that is watching, oh God, even for the first time, because we believe just as the name of this ministry implies, divine guidance, that you have been guided, divided by God, in a time and a season such as this, to hear these words, because we believe that there's a prophetic word that is hanging over your head, and as the message goes forth, God in his infinite wisdom will speak through this earthen vessel of clay. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. We welcome your presence in Jesus' mighty name. And let all say, Amen, Amen, Amen. We are talking about open heavens, people of God. This is powerful and I'm excited, you know. Uh, we may not even be able to exhaust the message as God leads. Maybe, maybe we will do part three because I've preached this message before. So this is part two. Hallelujah. Because God has been speaking to me all week that the heaven needs to be open over his people. You and I. Hallelujah. Therefore, there is nowhere else I would rather be right now but to stand in the presence of God's people. Hallelujah. To share his infallible words. Hallelujah. As some of you know, uh, at the very beginning of this year, because overnight, God has given us a word, John chapter 15. He says that I am the vine and we are the branches, hallelujah. And he says that apart from him, we can do nothing, people of God. And as I stretched forth and digested that passage of scripture, I was able to come to the conclusion that 2020, our survivability depended on our connectivity to God. And as most of you are familiar with what is transpiring, both in politics as well as in the church, there's a great shaking that is taking place. People that God, there was few fast and prayers ago that God spoke to us. And he said that the, 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 pop, the, the, pop, the Christian population was diminishing. Hallelujah. And therefore he had to reset the clock. And that those leaders in the church who were misleading God's people, therefore populating hell, they were going to be removed. Hallelujah. That is why 2020 has been a, a year, an, an interesting year. Hallelujah. So what is required of you and I is to remain connected to God. Hallelujah. So before we go forth in, uh, into our message, I just want to lay certain foundations that we have certain understanding. Because the Bible speaks clearly as to why we need to have a solid foundation. The Bible says that when the foundation of the righteous is destroyed, what can they do? Hallelujah. So what holds up? What holds you and I up as believers, as Christians that are consistent and persistent in our faith? is our foundation. Now, 2 Timothy 3.16, it says that all scriptures, hallelujah, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. This is from the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. That is why this ministry we preach obedience. Hallelujah. People of God. And as we we go into the message, you will come to understand that obedience is one of the keys that will unlock the heavens over you and I. Hallelujah. The other day, Jesus said that I will give you the keys, hallelujah, of the kingdom. He did not say key, singular. He said keys. Is someone hearing me today? Hallelujah. And I believe that the path of the righteous, you and I, must shine brighter and brighter. Unto a perfect day. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 4, uh, 4 18. The path of the righteous is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Hallelujah. Our path must always shine. Hallelujah. Is someone here with me? That's the essence of functioning on an open heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In my Christian walk, I have come to realize that believers have always had an expectation to experience what I call open heaven. We walk in righteousness because we want to experience open heaven. Open heavens lead to the outpouring of God's mercy, blessing, and power from heaven upon those who desire his will. 
to be done on earth as it is written in heaven. God reveals himself to people, speaks to them, and performs his will. When heaven opens, people of God, life on earth without the heaven, the, the open heaven influence is spiritually empty. Without an open heaven, people of God, believers can do little. Now, let me say to you that there has never been a person under this sun, born again or not born again, spiritual or not spiritual, that had ever become successful in this life without a spiritual existence. <laughs> Some of you will be asking now, oh, I went to school. I got this degree. I am a nurse. God did not help me. Who told you that? Who gave you the ability to comprehend? Who gave you the intellectual ability? Who gives you the strength to wake up, to read? Hallelujah. It is God. Now, what do you think that those who those in this world who are walking in the path of darkness, I mean they're the servants of the devil, those who seek occultic powers, why do you think that they will take somebody's child and sacrifice that child to a shrine so that they can break through, so that they can become successful? Because there is this inbuilt tendency that you and I have that there is a need for a spiritual help, people of God. So if you are a child of God, or not a child of God, you need some kind of spiritual help to be successful. Even the witches and the wizards understand that. And some way hear me. So you need spiritual help to actually break through in life. Now, before we go into the message in depth, I want to define for you what is an open heaven. What is open heaven? When I say open heaven, what does that mean? The book of Deuteronomy mentions an open heaven as an act of God that released blessing upon the children of Israel. Heaven is the receptacle that carries God's good treasure, which he releases upon the people on earth. Hallelujah. Heaven is where the treasure of God is. Hallelujah. So the heaven must be open so that the blessings can descend. Hallelujah. And come upon you and I. He blessed the work of our hands from the heaven and gives us the ability to support others. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28, verse 12 says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me today? When the heavens are open, God can pull down his blessing. Now, watch this. There's a difference between a blessing that is sprinkled, than a blessing that is poured out. Hallelujah. And God's desire for you and I is to pull out his blessing on us. Let us look at uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. It says that, bring ye, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. This is God. He says that, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, aha, we are talking about open heavens. Here he says what? He will open the windows of heaven, and do what? And pull you out. And blessing that there shall be that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That is what I call overflow. If there is no room enough to maintain or to contain the blessing that God has released, people of God, that's overflow. That's what I call the open heaven experience. Hallelujah. I am not talking about you know, receiving a little blessing here over there, receiving a little over the sea like this. Like when the rain is about to fall, there are times where the rain pours, people of God. And if you are out there, you will get drenched, you will not get wet, hallelujah. And there are times where the rain is just sprinkles, and you can even stand out, and you will not get wet, hallelujah. Now, what I consider an open floor, an open heaven, 
Hallelujah. It's when you are able to get drenched, hallelujah, in the blessings of God. That is God's desire. That is why he says in Malachi 3.10, bring all the tithes and offer it in my house. He said, try me now. Put me to the test and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. We are talking about what? Open heaven. And he says what? He will pull out blessings. He did not say I will sprinkle blessings. Hallelujah. Blessings, blessings that are sprinkled here and there can run out. We are talking about an overflow that comes as a result of open heavens. Hallelujah. May God cause the heavens to be opened over you today. May God cause your heavens to be opened over you today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God does not merely sprinkle or drop his blessings upon people. When heaven opens up, he pulls out his blessings. People who live under a close heaven may experience a few blessings here and a little over there. Hallelujah. Not overflowing blessings. I am talking about an overflow. Hallelujah. That's what, I, that's what open heaven is supposed to produce. An overflowing blessing. That The Bible says that your room is not enough to even contain it. Hallelujah. An overflowing blessing is what we're talking about today. An open heaven with its attendant blessings is God's reward for obedience. Now, one of the keys that you and I need to possess in order to open the heaven over us is the key of obedience, people of God. That is what I tell you that this ministry will emphasize on obedience because there's a greater reward when you walk in obedience to God. That was one of the strategies. That was one of the secrets behind the success of Jesus' ministry on the face of this earth. He was always obedient to the Father. Jesus would pray and pray like, if it is possible, remove this cup away from me. And yet he will yield again. Not my will, but your will. He subjected his will to the word of God. Obedience. Hallelujah. That's key number one. When believers please God, God opens up heaven, hallelujah, and releases his blessings and favor upon them. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and it has no sorrow with it. My God, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and it has no sorrow to it. My God, is someone hearing me now? There's a difference between what you and I call you and I in the kingdom of life. What we call blessing, what we characterize as blessing, and what those in the world characterize as blessing. Hallelujah. And by the way, there's a good blessing and there's a bad blessing. And there is a good success and there is also a bad success. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? So the blessings of God, it is pure. It maketh rich. It does not come with sorrows. Hallelujah. Now, those on the other side, those on the other side, in order for them to receive a blessing, they have to sacrifice, kill a human being, sacrifice the womb of the wife, sacrifice the vision of the child, sacrifice the health of the child. What kind of blessing is that, people of God? That's not the blessing that comes from God. Because the Bible tells me that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and it has no sorrow with it. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord is what I call good success. And it is in the Bible, people of God, there is good success and a bad success. And good success is any success that comes from God. Why bad success is any success that comes from the devil, which comes with sorrows. Hallelujah. There are people today who got their so-called prosperity and blessings by cheating others. Hallelujah. People of God, there's a sorrow that comes with that because whenever, whenever a person is cheated, if someone hearing me, if that person releases a curse, that curse will hold. That is what I taught you about curses. A curse without a cause can never stand. Is someone hearing me? So when you are teaching somebody, be mindful. If the person releases a curse, that curse will hold. 
Hallelujah. And I'm talking about how curses are activated. Curses are activated through pronouncement. Hallelujah. When you are obedient to God, you will become prosperous and successful. Hallelujah. It's proven through our scripture. That is why even the life of Jesus proves that. We'll get to that in a little, in a little while. The Lord said to Joshua, in Joshua, uh, 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 Moses' servant, in Joshua chapter 1, hallelujah, after Moses' death, the Bible said to Joshua that, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. He said, what? Well, it is time for you to leave my people across the Jordan. Hallelujah. Into the land I am about to give them. And in verse 8, he says that, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Hallelujah. Why? So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. He says what? Then you will be prosperous and successful. My God. Obedience. People of God. Obedience is the key to, 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 to activating an open heaven over your life. In the kingdom, God rewards obedience with prosperity and success. Hallelujah. Obedience is rewarded with prosperity and success. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 3 to 4 says, Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Good success. God wants you and I to have good success. And the key to obtaining good success is walking in obedience and righteousness. Hallelujah. No one is self-sufficient that he or she does not need an open heaven to fulfill God's purpose. People of God, you and I, no matter how anointed you may be, no matter how educated you may be, no matter how wise or smart you may think you are, you need an open heaven to fulfill the purposes of God over your life. The Bible tells us that during the after life of Jesus Christ, heaven open, heaven open up to usher him in his ministry. Although Christ is God manifested in the flesh, Jesus Christ depended on the heavenly influence of the Father and the Holy Spirit to execute his mandate on earth. My God. Jesus' ministry was never going to be successful without the interference of the heavenly Father in an open heaven experience. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me today? So don't tell me I don't need an open heaven. Even Jesus needed an open heaven to be successful in his ministry. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, my God. Although Christ, like I said, since God manifests in the flesh, he needed the, the, the heavens to be open. The he heaven opened up and testified, and God testified about him, that this is my beloved son, the one in whom I am well pleased, people of God. And the Bible says that, let, let's go to our text now. Luke chapter 3, verse 21 to 22, it reads, now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass, my God. Now watch this. Listen very carefully. There's a revelation in here that I believe that you and I need to capture, which is one of the keys, hallelujah, to activate the heavens to be open over you and I. Luke chapter 3, verse 21 to 22, it reads, Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus, also being baptized and praying, my God, the heaven was open. <laughs> Jesus came to baptize. Now, before him, there were other folks. Yet, Jesus, the Son of God, also being baptized and praying. The Bible says that, and the heaven was open. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily form. Like a dove, hallelujah, upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son. Indeed, I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Indeed, I am well pleased. 
my God. Now watch this here. Here was Jesus, the Son of God, subjected himself to an ordinary baptism. My God. He could have said, he could have said that John the Baptist, I am the I am, I am God incarnate. I am God manifested in the flesh. Because even John the Baptist himself testified when Jesus was coming. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Even John himself confessed and said that I am not worthy to baptize you. I should be baptized of you. And Jesus said to him, Let us do this just to fulfill righteousness. Hallelujah. One thing that is intriguing in this passage of scripture, people of God, it proves the humanity, the, the humility of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized. Hallelujah. You know, he was said to John the Baptist, let there be a separate baptism ceremony for me. Because I am the child of God. As I have prophesied that. People know that. Hallelujah. That I am the child of God. Therefore, I cannot be baptized with sinners. Now, before that, John the Baptist was saying, Who warned you of the times to come? Hallelujah. He called them sinners. But here was Jesus. Join the same line. Go in the queue with sinners to be baptized of John the Baptist. Is someone hearing me? He, was, he did not make big show of himself. He humbled himself to be baptized by an ordinary man. There was nothing fascinating about John the Baptist. There was nothing peculiar about John the Baptist. In the same river, the river Jordan, that was muddy, full of mud, then because there were people who came before him and they were baptized in the same water. And yet, Jesus waited for his turn. He joined the queue. Oh my God, my God. He sat, he stood in the queue, waited for his time. People that God, how many of us today will go somewhere knowing indeed that by the standards of men, we are people of normal character. And yet, and still, you will take the back of the line and you will stand up and you will wait for your turn. Even though people may be saying, oh, you are recognized man of God. You are recognized woman of God. Please come, come, come. Back past the queue. Come because you are a person of noble character. Come first. Let us serve you first. But Jesus did not do that. Jesus stood in the back. In the back. He was in the queue until he waited for his turn. People of God, if you have the ability to wait, which is one of the keys that has the ability to unlock the heavens over you, if you can wait for your time, Wait for your season. Wait for your moment. That's what the Bible says. That they that wait upon the Lord. Isaiah 14. Hallelujah. Verse 30 to 31. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Eagles, not, eagles do not fly. Eagles mount from high to high. From glory to glory. Hallelujah. If you can wait on God. Like Christ did. To wait for your turn. Thank you Father. How many of us can wait today? The secret behind the victorious ministry of Jesus was an open heaven. And this open heaven did not just happen. Oh my God. Open heaven does not just happen. Jesus Christ took an intentional, intentional steps to make the heaven open over him. Simply wishing does not cause the heaven to be open. People of God, I wish the heaven will be open over me. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. I wish the heaven will be open over me. It does not work like that. People of God, is someone hearing me? Open heaven does not just happen. You want, you want to be intentional. You know, going up, I used to think like that. That success is by coincidence. Oh, what's for you? We see your face. You don't have to do anything. You can light yourself up in a jungle. And if God wants to bring you out, he will come there and get you. You don't have to pray. You don't have to fast. You don't have to be nice. You don't have to, to seek, to, to, to ask God's assistance. Just be quiet. Hallelujah. No. Open heaven doesn't work like that. Simply wish does not cause heaven to be open. But taking deliberate action 
in the right direction dogs, people of God. Jesus constantly operated on that open heaven. Believers all over the world. Some of you, the reason you are watching me today is because you have faith in God. Hallelujah. And you believe that when the heavens are open, that is when God interferes or intervenes. Hallelujah. In your problem, your challenges will go away. Hallelujah. That is what we believe. We is the right belief. Hallelujah. And so hear me. That's how the heaven gets open over you and I. And so hear me today. The expression, Jesus also being baptized, says a lot about his, about his humility. Jesus was humble. He was humble, people of God. One of the keys that will unlock the heavens over you is humility. He was the son of God. He was said, I need an exclusive baptism. But he did not. He waited in line for his turn. How many of you can wait for your turn today? How many of you these days will live in a time, you know, of instant gratification? You know, fast food life, fast life. I want it and I want it now. You see God's blessing as just as you go through the drive through Pay your money, boom, and your fries and your burger. Everything is ready. People of God. An open heaven does not work like that. Hallelujah. It takes patience. It takes persistence. It takes humility. Hallelujah. For the heaven to be open over you. Hallelujah. Jesus waited in a queue. He waited for his time. Jesus understood that he had to wait for his time. And that the time of God, the time God has set for you and I, it's always the best time, people of God. When the time is right, no man can stop your open heaven experience. When the time is right, that is what the Bible says that he makes all things beautiful in his own time, not in your time, people of God. In his own time. In John chapter 2, verse 3, verses 3 to 4, here we see Jesus attended a wedding. And the Bible says that when the wine ran out, his mother came to him and said, the people are out of wine. And Jesus said to her, mother, what does this have to do with me? And he went on to say that my hour has not yet come. My God. People of God, when you wait for your time, when you wait for your time, and God sees your patience. Now, before God can entrust you with power, before God can entrust you with wealth, before God can entrust you, hallelujah, with the multitude, he must first test you, hallelujah. When you are tested and you are proven, that's when promotion comes, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And when the right time came, Jesus manifested and there was wine. Because what? It was the right time, hallelujah. Some of you, you cannot wait. You take matter into your own hands. Oh, all my friends are getting married. When will I get married to? You want to do things hastily. Oh, how come I am beautiful than so so and so? I am better than sister so so and so. How come she's married to that great man? How come she doesn't deserve it? And you go in there in that relationship to destroy it. Because what? You deserve, you believe that you deserve the best. And that no one else deserves the best but you. And you have to force your way through and get that which is somebody's people that God. Learn to wait for your time. Hallelujah. Wait for your time. Those who wait for God's time receive an open heaven. Isaiah 40, verse 7 to 31, it tells us that even though, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not weary. And they shall run and not faint. People of God. If you wait on God for your time, you know, my mother used to say to me, Paul, you are so patient. You know, back then in the day, all my brothers had left home. Hallelujah. 
everyone had gone. And each time any of them come by, come from overseas or whatever, I was always there in humility, serving them. There was never a desire to get away, to go, hallelujah, to go, or forcefully demand that I be taken, hallelujah. I was always there because I knew that there is a time and there is a season. And so we hear me. Wait for your time, people of God. When the fullness of time comes, when your fullness of time comes, the Bible says that the glory of the Lord it shall overtake you. See that like one in a driver's seat. When God's glory overtakes you, people of God, it is as if it's, it's like he's in control. At that point, there is no room for error. Is someone hearing me? When God's glory takes over the driver's seat in your life, when God's glory takes over the driver's seat in your life, there is no room for error. Because what? You will be operating and functioning under an open heaven. That whatever your hand touches, it works. Hallelujah. Whatever your hand touches, it works. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. It says that for unto us, this is talking about Jesus. Before he was born, this Jesus, people of God. Now, we are transitioning into the life of Jesus, for which the heaven had to open over him at baptism. Is someone hearing me? Before he was born, Isaiah saw the birth of this child. He says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. I told you that before. That there's a difference between the child and the son. Hallelujah. The son is the divine nature of Christ. The, sorry. Yeah. The son is the divine nature of Christ. And the child is the flesh, the physical body of Christ. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me here? Isaiah 9 says to something. For unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. Hallelujah. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read that from a different version so you, so you, cap, so you, you, you capture that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. The heaven must open over you. Hallelujah. Some of you, you've been jobless for so long. The heaven will open over you. Hallelujah. Yeah, here it goes. Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. Hallelujah. This was Isaiah's revelation of Jesus Christ. Now watch this. This was the same Jesus. Hallelujah. Who was in the queue waiting to be baptized. Jesus had a very short ministry. I believe his ministry lasted for three years. Hallelujah. But can you imagine a prophecy had come for you that a son will be born, a, 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 a child will be born, hallelujah, a son will be given, and it says that, and the government shall be upon the shoulders, he shall be called mighty God, hallelujah. Yet Jesus Christ was born, even though at his birth the wise men saw his stars and they went to worship him and they opened up their treasure and they gave gifts. Hallelujah. Yet after that, Jesus Christ walked among men like an ordinary person to the point one day he asked his disciples, Who do men say I am? And he said, and so they said, Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. And he turned to them and he said, Who do you say that I am? Ah, nobody could answer. They could not even know who he was until the Spirit of God, through revelation, said to Peter, and Peter said to him, you are Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Yet, Jesus was walking on the face of this, of this earth. Like an ordinary 
man. Is someone hearing me? He waited for his time. He was patient. He knew he was who he was. But he knew and he understood that there was a particular moment, people of God, that he was going to be ushered in. Is someone hearing me today? Here is the same Jesus that subjected himself to the baptism of an ordinary person, John the Baptist. The Bible says there was nothing fascinating. His clothes that he wore, camel's skin, he was eating locusts. Hallelujah. And someone here, why? Why, Jesus? Why? You, you, you are God incarnate. Why? Why are you subjecting yourself to the baptism of sinners? People were on in, in a queue from the same line, yet and still, even though the Bible says that he had no sin, yet he subjected himself to be baptized. People of God, it takes humility, it takes the heart of God for a person to do such a thing. What will usher you into your overflow? What will usher you into a season of an open heaven? People of God, it's your humility. How humble are you? How humble are you? How long are you willing to wait? Hallelujah. Jesus waited for his time. Waited for his pulpit. You know, it's prophesied over you. Some of you watching me. It has been declared. Oh, you shall become a wealthy person. God has anointed you to be the future leader of a nation. God has called you to be a great man of God. Yet, Year after year, you are waiting for the manifestation. It is not coming. Hallelujah. Year number one passes by. There is no manifestation. Year number two passes by. There is no manifestation. Year number three passes by. There is no manifestation. Jesus, at the age of 30, my God, my God, somebody will have given up at that point to say, I don't believe this thing anymore. I can no longer wait anymore, people of God. Some of you, you receive a tangible prophetic word over your life. Now, let me say this to you. There is a time between when the prophecy is given. Hallelujah. That period between the receiving of the prophecy. Hallelujah. And the time the prophecy is manifested or come to pass. That period between them. Is what I call the waiting period. Hallelujah. That's what Isaiah says here that Isaiah 40. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew your strength, their strength. That is why sometimes in ministry today, you see people stand very well and they want instant gratification. They want to be successful overnight. They want to jeer the crowd overnight. Hallelujah. God does not work like that. Because God has his own mode, his own time, his own period, his own way of processing you. So that you are ready, you are prepared, you are tested, you are proven. When your time of manifestation comes, so that you don't blow it. Hallelujah. That's why you see, even in ministry, some started well. And at some point, they can't wait any longer. And they take matter into their own hands. Go and seek witchcraft spirit, magical powers to, to perform some magic. Because there are people in the church these days, they are so gullible, so gullible. They don't understand. They're not able to distinguish between, hallelujah, the, the, the spirit of God and what is a magical power. And now you see some pastors, hallelujah, at some point will take matter into their own hands and go and seek occult powers and bring it in the church. But I have a news for you that 2020 2020 shall be a year of the great falling. That God is purifying the church. God is setting the ship away from the good. Hallelujah. Those that came in the church and corrupted the church and corrupted the church that God, that Jesus Christ paid his life for. Hallelujah. Spill his blood for on the cross of Calvary. He's coming back. Hallelujah. Those that are leading his people astray, that are in the church, they will be removed. Hallelujah. Because what? He's separating the sheep from the goat. The life of Christ on the 
cross. His death can never be in vain. That is what I always tell you. Because if the devil is able to take the majority of humanity to hell, that simply means the death of Christ was in vain. Hallelujah. That is why he will not allow it. The devil is never going to win. Those that are standing before, that are serving as an obstacle to God's people identifying and recognizing the truth, hallelujah, in their church, those so-called spiritual leaders will be removed. They will be removed because we are entering a time, people of God, we are entering a season when men of God, women of God, will receive the divine spirit of God. The revelation that comes when the heaven is open. Like I said, two things happen. You hear the you hear the voice of God and you see visions of God. That is why the Bible says that Jesus too, being baptized and praying. The Bible says that and the heavens was open, and the voice spoke and said, This is my beloved son, the one in whom I am well pleased. And the Bible says that. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, descended in the form of a dove. Hallelujah. Two things happen. We see visions of God when the heavens are open. We hear the voice of God when the heavens are open. Few days ago, at about 6 a.m. in the morning, I was just lying on the bed. And I heard the audible voice of God, people of God. Which means the heaven was open. And the Lord spoke to me something, something that I have been questioning, something that I have been asking. And I began to weep and marvel that God indeed heard my prayer, heard my request, heard my petition. Hallelujah. People of God, when the heavens are open, you will hear the voice of God. When the heavens are open, you will see visions of God. When the heavens are open, you will hear the voice of God. When the heavens are open, you will see visions of God. May the Lord Almighty cause the heavens to be open over you today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. When the heavens are open, that is when we receive miracles. When the heavens are open, that is when your healing is perfected. When the heavens are open, that is when your problem in your marriage is resolved and removed. When the heavens are open, that is when sicknesses, diseases are healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, when the heavens are open, we shut the door of poverty and stagnation. When the heavens are open, we experience breakthrough. When the heavens are open, we experience overflow. When the heavens are open, oh my God, you experience the light of God. That every obstacle that has been standing before you, every resistance that has been before you, when the heavens are open, they are removed. They can no longer resist you. Because why? You are functioning under an open heaven. You are in tune with God. You are moving from glory to glory. Like Isaiah said in Isaiah 40, Ah, Father, people of God, I see the atmosphere is shifting beneath you. It's shifting over you. I see the heavens be open over you. May the heavens open over your marriage. May the heavens open over your children. May the heavens open over your finances. Those of you, that your big account is showing a negative balance. By the end of this day, by the divine power of God, by the divine power of God, I declare and decree, I declare and decree, I declare and decree, every breakthrough you have been waiting for, every overflow you have been believing God for, every increase you have been believing God for, as the heaven is open, as the heaven is open, as the heaven is open, I declare an increase in your finances, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, may you increase from the north, from the south, the east, and the west. Everywhere, everywhere, your influence, your endeavors, your possessions, your name has been diminished. I declare today, 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 you are breaking through because the heaven is about to be opened over us. No longer shall you experience lack by God. Because when the heaven is open, God pulls out blessing. He does not sprinkle. He, he pulls out so that there is overflow. 
overflow in your finances. Ah, I see joy overflow. Relationships that have been going through the cracks where your husband, husband and wife have not been able to agree. Ah, because the heaven was shut over you. Today I prophesy. Today I declare. Today I decree. I speak, I speak, I speak under this prophetic grace, under this prophetic answer that the heaven is open over you, that the heaven is open over your family, that the heaven is open over your business. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. Maskarakata. Hey, Bosibayakata. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The heaven shall be open. The heaven shall be open. The heaven shall remain open. What caused Jesus to be successful throughout his ministry? It was as a result of open heavens. People of God, when the heavens are open, you walk in power. Hallelujah. When the heavens are open, you walk in prosperity. When the heavens are open, you walk in victory. Hallelujah. That is why, even under an open heaven, Jesus was crucified. He was put on the cross. He was pretty. He was bruised. He was pierced for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was placed upon him. Ah, to the point where he gave up the ghost. And he was placed in the tomb. Because the heavens were open. People of God. That even death could not keep him dead. People of God. Everyone under the sound of my voice that is dealing with sickness and disease because the heaven is open over you. Because the heaven is open over you. Even at the point of death, people of God, under an open heaven, you shall come back. Here was Jesus. In John chapter 11, the Bible says that Martin and Mary sent word to Jesus concerning Lazarus. And they said, the one whom you love is sick. Hallelujah. They knew that Jesus had the supernatural ability to cure Lazarus. Hallelujah. Because what? There was an open heaven over him. And so it very me. But none of the day understand that even to the point of death, a person may be dead because the heaven is open. People of God. The person can still come back to life. They did not see that dimension of Christ at all. And at that, Jesus received the word. He did not go telling his disciples, Oh, pack your load, hurry up, let us go before Lazarus dies. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And he stayed there several days. It is somewhere very rare. Jesus understood that the heaven was open over him. When the heaven is open over you, people of God, there is no such thing as limitation. <laughs> My God. There is no such thing as limitation. Don't allow people to place limitation over your life. Oh, you can only do this. You can only do that. Hallelujah. That was my story when I came to Georgia. Couldn't get a job. When Spoke to my wife. Took me to the grocery store. Hallelujah. Begin to walk as a store boy. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? That determination and that courage. Knowing indeed that for everything there is a time and there is a season. When the heaven is open over you, people of God. Is someone hearing me? It is just a matter of time for your manifestation. When the heaven is open over you. Long story short. After while I was still there, went back to school to get education. Hallelujah. To get myself a better job. And someone heard me. Started my business. Some say, oh, we tried this before. It didn't work. We did this before. It didn't work. We tried it. It's just a waste of time. Hallelujah. People of God. When the heaven is open over you, you are not just like an ordinary person. And someone heard me. You can go places where people have been. You can try things where people have tried and they never succeeded. But when the heaven is open over you, hallelujah, you can be the first and someone else. So here was Jesus. <clears throat> Spent a few days back. 
The situation got even worse. Lazarus had died. Hallelujah. Jesus emerges on the scene. Matthew and Mary begin to speak. Had you been here? Ah, my God. They were saying, when you hear, had you been here? That means you are late. You are late. You are late. The reason we sent the message to call you, it has gone beyond reach. Had you been here, Lazarus would not have died. Had you been here, Lazarus would not have died. Jesus said to them, I am the resurrection. I am the life. That whosoever believeth in me, hallelujah, even though you be dead, you shall surely live again. They begin to speak like theologians. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We understand, we know that in the last days, in the last days, that those that are in Christ, they will rise up. Ah, my God. And so we heard, Jesus said, Take me to the tomb. Hallelujah. Order and open heaven, people of God. There is no such thing as it is late. <laughs> My God. Some of you, you have been waiting for so long. Hallelujah. For the time of your manifestation. But I've come to announce to you that in due season, in a relatively short period of time, as the heaven opens over you, you will come to a place, you will look back and say, what? It this me? Yes. Because the Bible says that when the Lord shall take away the captivity of Zion, we shall be like those who marvel. Hallelujah. You will be blown away by what God can do. You will be marveled by the doings of God. Hallelujah. And someone hearing me today, wait for your time. Be patient as you wait on God. Indeed, indeed, the manifestation of your time shall surely come. He was David, a son of Jesse. The Bible says that when the Lord rejected Saul, Saul was rejected. The king, the second king of Israel had been rejected. Hallelujah. And the Bible says God spoke to Samuel. He said, take a horn of oil. Go to the house of Jesse. He says what? In the house of Jesse, I have chosen for myself a king. My God. Some say, say oh, you are a pastor. Stay out of politics. Oh, you are a gospel musician. Stay out of politics. Oh, God should not be involved with politics. Hallelujah. This is 1 Samuel chapter 16. This is God involved with politics. Hallelujah. He said that, go to the house of Jesse. He said to Samuel, amongst the sons of Jesse, I have chosen for myself a king. Hallelujah. Speaking of David. Hallelujah. God did not give the name of David to the prophet. He said, take the horn of oil, my God. He was the prophet Samuel, embarked on a prophetic journey. Hallelujah. Assemble the household of Jesse. Hallelujah. A prophetic conference be held in the household, in the house of Jesse. David was at the back of the desert, people of God. He was not in the initial meeting, so to speak. A prophetic conference is held in his father's house, yet he was not considered people of God. Is someone hearing me? And there was a prophet, all of the other boys, in stature. You know, they look big, they're tall, you know, sizable, look attractive whatsoever. And this time the prophet looks, hey, this guy that looks so good like that, he might be the one that God has chosen. Each time the prophet moves with the oil to pour it, it won't pour it. The oil won't come out. Hallelujah. The oil will not come out. Signaling that that person was not the chosen one. And the prophet scared through all of the boys. The oil could not pour out. And he said to Jesse, is there any other son that you have? Do you have any other son? And Jesse goes like, Oh, I have a son, but he's a little boy. Hallelujah. He's at the back of the desert, tending to sheep. Hallelujah. The prophet says that until David gets here, oh my God, the one God has chosen people of God, 
you will find your breakthroughs. You will find your miracles in an unlikely places. God will use an unlikely platform. Some of you, you follow the big names. Oh, Reverend Dietrich Pope, this and so, so and so and this and that. Only to see yourself disappointed in the end. That it wasn't it. You are living by sight. You are living by what you are seeing. You are following the big names. Only to see them coming down, crashing. Hallelujah. Jesus, being baptized by John the Baptist, in an ordinary baptismal ceremony that was common to everyone who made themselves available to baptize. And they were, they even, but there were those who were baptized ahead of him. But yet, he subjected himself, hallelujah, to that simple place. The water was even muddy at that time. People of God, he was said, I am the child of God. I can wait that the everyone to assemble at a particular pool, you know, because I am the child of God. But he subjected himself to the baptism of an ordinary man. And so what you me today? Your blessings will be in ordinary places. Do not the big names. Not the big names. The one God has chosen. You know, most of the time, hallelujah, there is nothing fascinating about them. Hallelujah. He was David. King to his father's house. And the prophet took the oil. Pulls the oil over his head. And a tender is David. Is someone hearing me? It is very much possible that at a tender age, even Samuel, the prophet, the son of Hannah, when Hannah was buried, this son that Hannah vowed to give to God, heard the voice of God at a very tender age, people of God. There are many times that the one upon whose head God has put the oil cannot be visible. And God does that for a reason. Because the devil is so cunning. The devil will want to destroy a person before the time of manifestation. That is why many a times God will comfort the person. They will be so simple. Among his brethren, he will be very, very simple. The simplest one. That is why amongst your children, people of God, when your children are growing up, the one that appears to be nothing. Please, please, please. Do not despise him. Do not despise her. Hallelujah. Do not drop to conclusion. Oh, this is the one that will take me to America. This is the one that will do this for me. Oh, this is the one that will take me here. Oh, this is the one that will lift up the family. You have no idea whatsoever. God has a way of disguising the great, the great, the great, the ones God has chosen. He will hide them. Hallelujah. He will disguise them. David was at the back of the desert, not knowing. Not even being mentioned, considered, for that prophetic conference. God has chosen a king from your house. You would think everybody should come, even the baby. Why was David left out of it? Hallelujah. Neither did, little did they know that in the end, it was David who was anointed to be the future king of Israel. And the Bible says that the, the Lord spoke to, 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 to Samuel that I, God, I Elohim, I, ancient of days, I, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I, the God of Shadrach, Mishael, and Abednego, I don't look at the size of a person. I look at the heart. I am the God of the heart. I am the God of the heart. People of God, if you have a heart that God looks at that is pure, the heart that God look at, that He can work with you, He can trust you with great things. He can trust you even with a nation. He can trust you to be a great person that lead a generation and cross the Red Sea. And God sees your heart. He can trust you like He trusted, like He trusted Joshua to lead the children of Israel and cross the Jordan River to the land into the land of promise that He swore to give the children of Israel. Oh my God, if God sees your heart, if God sees your heart, he can trust you. Hallelujah. Here was David. The Bible says that one day, his father said to him, go to the back of you, take food. Take groceries for your siblings. 
They were on the battlefield. His brethren were in the Israeli army, people of God. You must, you must fit a certain, you must have a certain qualification to be a member of the Israeli army. David was not. Is someone hearing me? He took food to the battlefield. Later did he know that it was the moment that God has chosen to announce him, people of God. God will always choose a moment in our lives to announce us, just as Jesus was announced at baptism. David was about to be announced at the battlefield. The Bible says that when he took the groceries, he arrived on the battlefield. Only to see that Goliath, the champion of the Philistine, had posed a challenge and said that he that is able to fight me, let him come and fight me. If I defeat him, you shall become our slaves. If he defeats me, the Philistine shall be your slaves. Is someone hearing me today? Nobody could fight him. Those days, the kings were permitted to fight, to go into battle. Where was Saul? Saul did not have the boldness, the audacity to go and fight. Hallelujah. David looked for long and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to challenge the army of the living God? This was David, people of God. He understood that the character of God was at stake. That the name of Elohim, the name of the essence of this, the God of his forefather, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was at stake. And David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to challenge the army of the living God? David said, I am going to fight him. They begin to mock. They begin to laugh at David. Who are you? You are a little boy. You have no experience in this kind of warfare. David said, the same God who has delivered the bear and the lion into my head, that same God shall deliver you into my hands and I will cut off your head. My God, those were the words of a little boy, people of God. David was a man of faith. A man of faith. Little did people know that while David was at the back of the desert, while David was yet not be announced, God was preparing him for something greater, for something mightier, for something that will announce him at the appropriate time. People of God, God shall announce you. There was a valley between David and Goliath. And the Bible says that David went in the valley. He picked five stones. Watch this. David picked five stones. Now, you come to realize he only used one. The five stones was prophetic because the Philistines, they had five gods. Hallelujah. And all of those gods, David had enough stone. Oh my God. My God. My God. David had enough stones in his hands to slay all of the gods. My God. David said to him, Hallelujah. David said, In the face of Goliath, you come against me with your spear, your sword, your javelin. He says, What? I come against you in the name of the, oh my God. David understood that at that time, just prior, before that, the Bible says that Goliath cursed David by the name of his God. So at that point, the trajectory of the battle changed. And therefore, David understood that the battle now was no longer between two men. It was between gods. Hallelujah. That is why David had to invoke the name of Elohim in the battle. He said that you come against me with your spear, your sword, your javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. At that time, God said, David, take the back seat. I am only going to use you as a weapon in my hand. And that is why when David threw the first stone, people of God, the Bible says that the stone penetrated the forehead of Goliath and it's entered into his head. People of God, if you do if you do the science and the calculation, you will come to understand that stone cannot, it is not possible for a stone to break the bone that is in the forehead of a man. That means it was God, it was Elohim, it was the essence of this who removed the bone from the, the, the face of Goliath. And therefore, it was, it was only the flesh that was on them. That is why the stone penetrated and entered into the head of Goliath. He came down crashing. David went on 
for him, took his sword, cut off his head as a champion. David was able to turn his trials into a trophy. Today, today, by the divine power of God, under an open heaven, just as David was under an open heaven, and he was able to defeat his Goliath. I see you today, because the heaven is open, that every obstacle that stands before you, that every problem that stands before you, reminiscent of Goliath, today, by the divine power of God, I see that you shall be a weapon in the hands of God, because the heaven is open, you shall become victorious on every side, in every dimension of life. I declare victory. I declare victory. I speak victory. Victory over your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. My God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The heaven shall be open over us. The heaven shall be open over us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we conclude, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 10, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, people of God. When you lean on your own understanding, you run a risk. You run a risk of missing the mark, of missing the, 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 one of the important keys. Hallelujah. Is trusting in the law at all times. It provokes the heaven to be open when your trust is in the law. Hallelujah. That is why each and every day when I pray, I say, God, my total dependency is on you. Hallelujah. My total dependency. I don't care about what men say about me. I don't care about how many people have written me off. What I am mindful and conscious of. Is the presence of God. My trust, my confidence is in you and you alone. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Do not be wise, people of God, in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be helped. Hallelujah. It will bring health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions. Hallelujah. Important. That's one of the keys to open heaven is honoring God with your possessions. When you honor God with your possessions, just like Malachi 3 10 says, bring your tithe and the offering in my house. He says what? Try me now. Put me to the test. And see if I will not open the windows of heavens and pour upon you a blessing. And he said that you will not have store room enough to contain it. Because what? There shall be overflow. When you honor God, people of God, with your possessions, you provoke the heaven to be open over you. Some of you want to tell you your time and your offering. Meanwhile, you receive the blessing. Hallelujah. From the word. When we speak about tithing and offering, that's when the devil begins to speak to you. People of God, lean not on your own understanding. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. As God is about to open the heavens over us. Hallelujah. In these few days, hallelujah, remember this. Honor the law with your possessions and with the first fruit of your increase. So what? So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Hallelujah. We've come to the end. We believe that you are blessed. Hallelujah. We believe that you are blessed. We declare the heaven to be open over us. Hallelujah. Let us read. Let me make some declaration. Hallelujah. Over your lives. Hallelujah. As we close, don't forget your tithe and your offering. Hallelujah. Don't forget your tithe and your offering. Malachi 3 10. It says that God will open the heavens. Hallelujah. So if you want the heaven to be open over you, walk in humility. Wait for your time. Honor God with your possession. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be patient. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Don't forget your tithe. Hallelujah. Your tithe and your offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Isaiah 41. Let me show you something. Isaiah 41. We'll close on that. Hallelujah. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Hallelujah. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see what the NIV says. Isaiah 41, from verse 10 to 20. Hallelujah. I'll be speaking. I'll be releasing some blessings over your life. Hallelujah. For the, Isaiah 41, 10 to 20. <clears throat> it says that, So do not fear, for I am with you. Hallelujah. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. People of God, fear not. With everything that is happening around the globe, in churches, in governments, in nations, God is saying, fear not. Hallelujah. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who wish against you, my God, will surely be ashamed and disgraced. God is saying to you, all those who rage against you shall surely be ashamed and disgraced. I speak that over your lives today. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, God says, you will see them, you will find them no more. My God. God is about to bring us into a season of rest. Some of you, you have been going through hell on earth in your relationship, in your finances. Hallelujah. It's like hell on earth. God is about to bring rest for us. Hallelujah. Do you search for your enemies? God says you won't see them. Those who wish what against you will be nothing at all. They shall not prevail. For I am the Lord your God. Who takes hold of you, of your right hand, and says to you, do not fear. My God, how many times? Do not fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. Do not be afraid. My God, how much more can we stress this? You want Jacob. Hallelujah. You want Jacob. Little Israel, do not fear. For I myself will help you, declares the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. See, I will make you into a threatening flesh, new and sharp, with many teeth. You will thresh the mountains and crush them, and reduce the hills to chaff. You will windle them. The wind will pick them up, and a gale will blow them away. That's the word of God for you, people of God. God is ushering us into a season of rest like the children of Israel. Even though calamity came upon Egypt, the children of Israel were also residing in Egypt. But because they were covered under the open heavens of God, they were preserved, hallelujah, even at the Passover. At the Passover, a mandate came from God to Moses, let the head of each household Take a lamb, kill it, take the blood, and apply it on the doorpost of the lantern. He says, well, when I see the blood, the blood was serving as a mark of distinction, a mark of exemption. They were exempted from whatever transpired in Egypt. Is someone hearing me? As children of God today, I speak over your life by the blood of Jesus, the blood that redeemed. Revelation 12 tells us that there was war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels. And the Bible says that and they prevailed not. But the Bible says that and they defeated him and they overcame him by the power of the blood. The testimonies today, today, people of God, as you go your separate ways, I declare, I speak, I activate the blood of Jesus over your family.
for your influence, your endeavors, your possession, that wherever you go this week to transact business, may the blood of Jesus speak for you. May you be covered. May the heaven be opened over you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Those of you that God has touched your heart to cause the heaven to be opened through your through honoring God with your possession as you are about to give your tithe and your offering. Just as he says in Malachi 3.10 that he shall open the windows of heaven and put upon you blessing that your storeroom may not even be enough to continue it. I declare as you get today, may God prove to you that he works at you. May the heavens be opened over you in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every sickness, every disease, every calamity, ah, not to come near your dwelling. I declare you shall be dangerous to the enemy. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you shall be an unattractive destination for trouble. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, that whatever your hands shall touch this week, it shall prosper. I build a hedge of protection around you and your family. I declare your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may your substance increase in the land. May your course be lengthened. May the God Almighty, may Elohim, expand your territory. Those of you believing God for a new job, I declare this week, as the heaven is open over you, that whenever you go, places you have been before, and you have been told that your services are not needed, I pray, I pray, I pray. Some of you this week, you will receive a phone call, a phone call that will alter your destiny for the better. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everywhere you step, that which God said to Joshua, that whenever you shall step your foot, you shall possess. I declare that this week, whenever you step your foot, you shall possess it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, amongst the best, you shall be the best. Among the best, you shall be the best. May the Lord Almighty, I have put upon you a garment of praise. I see angels right now in the realm of the Spirit, putting and distributing a garment of praise and the oil of gladness, people of God. I declare every spirit of bad luck that have been following you today, 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 I go an end to it because the heaven is open over you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, everywhere it has been decreed and mandated that at a certain time, at a particular time, a sin will come upon you, a sickness will come upon you, a disease will come upon you, I come against, I rebuke, I destroy, I nullify every spirit of grief and told death. No one under the sound of my voice is permitted to die in any accident this week, any shooting incident. I declare you escape the snare of the Father. I declare and decree you are taken from glory to glory. This week shall be your best week. I see, I see, I see, I see you rising up from that spirit of stagnation, bad luck, disappointment, miscarriage, barrenness. I declare, I decree, none shall be buried in the land. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 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 Just as David was anointed to be a king in a wedding, I declare and decree some of you, the fullness of time is in a wedding. Your fullness of time is in a wedding. That God is anointing you for a time and a season. That the burden of the nation shall one day be upon your shoulders. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amongst your children, I pray, I pray, I pray. May God anoint your children for greatness. That because your children dwell in that family, because that son lives in that family, because that daughter lives in that family, your oil shall never run dry. Your fridge shall never be empty. Your, 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 your pantry shall never run dry. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let victory, victory, victory. I accompany you wherever you go this week. Whatever you fly, you ride, or you drive, whatever you walk, I declare and decree, let your defense not be breached. Victory from the north, victory from the south, the east and the west. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may no witch, no wizard have access to your dwelling. I declare and decree you are heavy. I declare, I command you to be invisible to the enemy. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Father.
Father. Thank you. Let's end up this. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. We have come to the end. Don't forget your tithe and your offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't forget your tithe and your offering. Thank you, Jesus. Let the heaven remain open over you this week, wherever you go. Hallelujah. Because the heaven is open, victory. Because the heaven is open, favor, favor, favor. Your help shall come from unexpected places in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes.
Have a victorious day, amen. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll see you on here tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for our morning prayer and inspiration. God bless you all. Bye-bye.